there's one command which is cp cp command will do what please hear me out you can copy any file from the host machine to the container and from the container to the host machine simple from the host to container container to host then you will ask rajesh can i uh, uh, copy the files from one container to another container not using docker command we don't have a docker command but there's a way that is called volumes okay so there's one file in my directory which is get docker.sh file i want to copy so docker cp this file i want to copy inside a container and where i want to copy under the tmp done and can i see that so exact container id ls tmp and you see the file is there now i will delete from the location which is local and i will reverse this see that file is not there so now what i am going to do is i am going to copy back this file from the container and here source is this one and the destination is current directory dot and now you work simple now guys create command we have covered diff command now diff command basically it will tell you what are the difference you what are the things you have done it in the container for example i copied only one file remember that so that i should see that so any files you modify created deleted change of files and directory you can see that c for the changes a for addition d for delete okay so right now i have not done anything great installation or installations but if you do that you can see the changes which is done in the containers using the diff command now exit we tried inspect guys this command you must use it inspect will give you every information about contain every information which include environment variable images uh, networking information cpu ram and blah blah things a lot of information will be given okay kill command we have used it post command we use it port command will tell you if you have port exposed then you can see that information from this and you see that no information has come because i did not expose this container and uh, with hyphen p option that finish now a uh, ps command you know that rename command any container you can rename it using this command which is here so rename this container to what dev1 and you see that here this is the container i renamed it now restart rm run start stop unpause you know that so basically we have completed almost all the commands working with the containers the task for you is update and wait so this is the assignment for you i'll let you do that and then wait for now there are few commands which we have in the monitoring sections also that means you can using this commands you can monitor it for example i want to monitor this uh, uh, container logs so how do i do that so here if you look at this docker logs commands and this container and run it and you see that logs of the container right now i don't see it why because i am not able to access it but if i uh, access the container uh, and then create a log http uh, one what is the port uh, what is the container uh, ip address so uh, uh, i need to get it so inspect that inspect that it should be two i guess because no containers are there yeah this is one okay so here inspect no curl curl http dab dab paste it enter uh why is not coming So running. Uh, it's running, and I need to check this. Uh, this should not happen, but I need to check that. I'm checking the IP address one more time. Uh, this is the correct, right? Yes. So ping. Let me ping that. Ah, it's pinging. Why it's not running? uh http uh okay i can check this but uh, just to let me restart that if it's fixing could be any other reasons also restart ah see my bad i understood this anyone could know could not notice this is not httpd it's a ubuntu container 
there is no apache running so i'm hitting the apache that's not good right got it yes that's see mistakes can happen so guys uh, so here logs is not coming right no problem i know that how to show you in the one to also logs pid one remember that so this container you see the log is not coming but you know what i will attach this container docker attach and inside that because of bin bash i can attach ls 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 control p q and i am outside of the container and then logs see this all ls which i run inside a container you can see as a logs because of bash okay so logs we have, we have run it ps command we have run it stack commands stack command basically will tell you what are the cpu and ram you are utilizing by the containers you can see that all containers you will see how much cpu how much ram how much network how much block io you are utilizing so you can see that top command top command will tell you what is the process id in the host machine for each container i repeat host machine for example there is a docker ps docker top now container id now in the system what is the what is the pid see here pid 23352 so let me grab that 23352 and you see that this is the bash so and one more process id which you have ppid this one and this is your container b so in the host machine if you want to know which is the id pid which is empowering the container that you can talk about. guys here remember that event command event command will give you the all the logs of the d docker d not container docker d see here this is a container this is for container this is for container this is for container uh, this is for the server docker d so docker d see here events nothing is coming why because i am not doing anything on the server i will use this one and i will run one container docker run python d http d and you see that i told you run is equal to create connect and start and many other stuff happen you see that these are the logs of docker d docker server yes so guys events command we can use it for the docker d so guys we have completed the monitoring containers also now we have to work with an image so so far are you comfortable any questions any questions abel amen anshu fazan prasanna rakesh suresh jaidav that's okay uh, yes, i am testing so need to practice a lot yes yes uh, let me tell you i know that but you know uh, uh, i'm trying my best to cover lots of topic in four hours so you can have a maximum content with you and uh, the fear at least the fear will come out of you about the docker is not a great thing it's not a complicated thing it's simple it's easy to work with it it just required a little bit of practice yeah okay I just so guys and... yeah. yes please tell me uh, just uh, can you please after the session export all the comments which you run and put them in one notepad so yes yes that be... Please. that's that's my task here i will do that so in fact i should do that uh let me let me do that now itself that will be easier for me because after that i may get little uh, this network time out and all and do this so this is the notes and this all commands are in front of you in one box other box also ran few commands just for that uh you know i was needed and here this is another box i mean it's not a box another box other sessions okay more more questions guys no okay so can we create an image all of you ready for it yes okay guys do you remember what is an image you have to tell me what is an image because i have explained it to you and if you don't tell me what is an image then i will not be able to teach you how to create, create an image tell me what is an image anyone remember that
Anyone remember that? So guys, let me repeat one more time here. Image is nothing but collections of file system. Will you remember that? Collections of file system. What file system? I'm talking about. Examples. Agree with me or not, guys? Yes. Yes. So yes, image is nothing but a collection of file system, root file system, user file system, application file system, example, Ubuntu root file system, and then this Ubuntu root file system, RFS, I must write it, otherwise we'll get confused in the future. Okay, then uh, user name, and then some applications. Now, image, every container would get one mount, every container, one copy of Docker image attached to this, and df-kh, which I have shown you, how many containers I'm having I need? See two containers and df-kh, you see that two mounts are there. So here, that's what, that's what I said. Every container would get one mount is equal to one copy of Docker image attached to container. See, here, there are two containers, two attachment, two mounts, you can see that. Mounted on also. So that's a, that should be clear. So whatever you have an image, you should inside a container. So anything you want to keep it inside a container, you should be having an image. Okay, this is some more examples which you have. It. And Docker registry, I'll not discuss right now. So I hope you remember that. What is an image? You know that, correct? Yeah. So guys, you know, it's very simple, you know. Very simple. I must draw some pictures. So you'll have a little bit better visualizations. Please understand that, guys. This is your image. OK, this is your image. Now divide it into multiple file system, one file system, two file system, three file system, and four file system. What you have here, let's say it's a CentOS root file system, RFS. What you have here, maybe Java, guys. What you have here, maybe Tomcat. And what you have here, maybe Jenkins. One application which is based on Java. So the logic is very simple, guys. Here, Jenkins need a Tomcat, maybe, or maybe it can be any other application. Tomcat need to run Java, and Java can run on the root file system. And the root required a boot file system, which is in the host machine anyways. And this is your image. Agree with me, all of you? Yes. Yeah. You know, guys, you know what? This file system, we don't call a file system in Docker. Anyone remember that, what we call it? What do we call it? OSI layer? No, layer we call it. File system layer. In Docker, we call it a layer. In Git, we call it commit ID. Why I'm correlating commit ID? Remember, the moment you commit, I repeat, the moment you commit, you get a 40 character SHA value, which you can refer with the seven characters also. So here also, let me show you, this file system is nothing but a commit. So let me show you how many images you have. Docker images, there are two images, Ubuntu and uh, and uh, HTTPD. And I want to see how many commits have happened in the HTTPD. And you see that these many commits, that means these many file systems we have. These many. Now you see what are the changes has been done. You can see that in the size also, zero bytes means environment variable changes. And some of them is uh, like a heavy one, which has a certain files and directories. Whereas this should be your root file system. Okay, so like that, you can check this. Any other images also, guys. History command will tell you all this stuff. Here, history Ubuntu. So Ubuntu, how many layers we have? Because there's are two layers. So two file systems. How do I see? History command. You can also inspect it, guys. Inspect will give you, you can inspect the container, you can inspect the image, you can inspect the volume, you can inspect the uh, network, 
everything you can do that. So it's here, go and check these layers. Where the layers? Uh, somewhere here. See here. These are the layers. Uh, sorry, sorry. This is the layers. See here. This is the root file system. So I'm not complicating too much. Slowly you get comfortable with it. But are you comfortable with this concept? At least this image. Hello. Yes. Now, guys, there's a two command I used it. Which one? Can you please tell me to check the image? Okay, I'm sure. And uh, inspect. Wonderful. Please remember this command. Inspect is a very powerful command. Inspect with container, inspect with image, inspect with uh, network, inspect with the volumes, many things. It can work like, like a chair. Now, the question what I'm trying to tell you here is, see, uh, right now I know that uh, this timeline is very limited and you guys have not practiced it. You guys have not got into the system right now. And uh, many of you are having limited information about the system architecture. So I will not complicate with the too many terminologies. Okay, I'll be very simple here. So at least the 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 fear of creating an image will go away from you. So I will not get into too much of depth, but at a high level. So the my purpose is to make you comfortable with the system first, and then once you get an interest, automatically you start googling it. By the way, 99% of the time, people don't have a requirement to go into depth of the anatomy of the images. Okay, simply you will use images every day, you will create an image every day, but you will not go into depth of how it's structured, algorithm, and blah, blah, blah. Things. That's a sharp to be this. So you will not go into that. So I'll not complicate the stuff. I'll be making very simple the flow here. See here, every image, please remember that every image has a multiple file system this lowest file system is the root file system and after that you can have n number of applications by the way this all you can have it in one layer itself one file system itself but we do not have it like that why because sometimes you know what you want to upgrade java sometimes you want to upgrade tomcat one day sometimes this so in that case if you keep it separate it's very easy to do that easy to upgrade and patches creating a new images out of it now guys you know what happens this is a very important statement. I am I am telling you to you. Please hard code that. Do you remember this command, all of you? Uh, that command is docker run. Docker run. Where is this command? Huh. Do you remember this command? Yes. Yeah. And guys, do you remember that? This one also, please. Can you please read it for me? Uh, not, not, not this one. This one. Got it, all of you? Yes. So what happened, guys? You know what? Please understand that very simple flow. What happens then the moment you run the docker run dub 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 in his name, what happens? All this layer, please hear me out clearly. There should not be any confusion. All this layer merge into one layer. It's become one file system by the way. See here, the same thing I was telling you. See, here I said very clearly one copy of Docker image attached to the user container as a mount. What happens? All the layers, all the file system, which has a root, Java, Tomcat, Jenkins, or blah, 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 all get attached to this one file system. It create one file system and then attached to the user. And then you get a mount also. Oh, sorry, mount, this is a file system. Mount, one network, one P3. And this is user so whatever you have in this file system it runs an application is running did you understand that one so every container merge this here into one file system now you will ask me rajesh where exactly you saw that so i'm not getting into depth of it but i'll remind it you 
Do you see how many containers you have? Look at my screen. See here. I have a two containers. So that means I should be having two layers of merge, correct now? See here. Read this. This is a one layer. This is another layer, and you see merged, merged. Understood all of you? Yes. yes. Now I'll show you a little bit more depth. Okay. I am stopping these two containers. Okay. Look at my screen very carefully, and and look at this here. I am stopping the container. And finally, I'm deleting also container. It's taking time, little, and I'm deleting my container. Please focus on this session. Very important session. Now I have a two images. I have no container right now. I have a two images. I will delete this container image also. How do I delete? RMI. RM for container delete. RMI for image delete. You could have not deleted an image if the containers are using. So that's the reason I deleted the container first. Now, guys, I cleaned everything. System is clean, and you see that within a few seconds, you could clean the whole system. But but I should go to the var lib docker overlay. Now you say, Rajesh, how do you know this path and all? So guys, I don't know. It's a set path actually, and I query this location. Docker info, and they told me where was your location for the Docker. Everything Docker knows about. It. I did not ask. The path may be different in a different operating system. Now, what is the size of this directory? Zero bytes. That you can see some links and all. The same thing. One. Now, guys, I will pull one image. Docker pull Ubuntu. Enter. And you see that how many times is pulling? See, this is the pulling latest, and this is the one pull complete. And you see here, see, there's a only one layers uh, in the uh, in the Ubuntu image. See here, there's only one pull. Where is the pull? Here it is. See that, and that's the reason you see the one pull pull here. Now you'll say, Rajesh, this ID is not matching. It's pulling here, and this is different ID. Don't look at that, because if in order to understand the structure, you need to understand the chart of this is algorithm, which is a completely out of this context. So right now there is only one layer of this one two. You if you pull different image, you may have a ten layers also. Okay. So now if you guys if you look at this, if I go inside that and here go to the diff directory, what you see that here? Look at this where I am inside the one of the layer of the image, one two image inside the diff. And what I see? What you have? Tell me what is that? The home directory of uh... it's a root root file system. It's a root file system. OPT, etc, dev, home media, prop, this that. Correct? The same thing I am having in the host machine also. See, this is one something similar. It's not the same, but similar one. There's a difference between same and similar. My host machine also have a root file system. Every container also, every image also have a starting with the root file system. Make sense, guys? All of you. Ubuntu is a root or image, root image actually, base image. Are you understanding? All of you. Yes. So now, guys, what I am doing right now, I am creating a container. So you see that additional layer will be created. That's called merge layer. So can I create a container? Docker run hyphen itd Ubuntu and here see that. Okay, I need to go back a little bit. Here, see that. See earlier it was only one file system, this one, and now you got this one. Don't look at this one. This is a runtime environment. Okay. This uh, if you see the size also, it will be very eight KB or something. Yeah. And if you see the size of this directory, yeah. And now see the df open page. Look at this here. This is the same. Got mounted to the container. Are you able to see that all of you? Yes. Okay, guys, I will go inside this. Look at my screen, all of you. I will go inside this. And here you see, see here. You have a diff merge work. 
I'll not complicate too much, but I'm talking about merge right now. See, the moment I stop the container, see that. Look at my screen. I'm stopping the container. Docker, stop container ID. And you see here, I stop it. It's taking a little time. Uh -huh. And then ls see merge has gone. Merge has gone. df has ph See mount got disappeared. Can I start it? I'm starting this one more time. See that beautifully how this is being played. Look at this. Merge has come and mount has come. So guys, what I'm trying to say overall, you know what? This containers, this these file systems are there all the time. When you run a container, this whole file system get merged into one layer and this get mounted to the container. The moment you stop the container, this get deleted. The moment you start the container, this again get created. Are you having understanding now? Yes. yes. Okay. Now I'll not confuse you too much, guys, because you have to do that little bit of work also. So, guys, here what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to teach you how to create an image. So, question is how to create an image. So, guys, there's a two ways to create an image. One way using existing container, okay, and then uh, another one using Docker file, okay, Docker file. Both way I'll teach you. Now, using existing container, let's say uh, my manager said, Rajesh, what you need to do, you have to have a base of Ubuntu, and then inside that Ubuntu, and inside that you do one thing: install Git, and then install Apache, and then all this thing, blah 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 and then give it to me that image new image that's the requirement for the project it can be installed java also for the sake of it so all these things you install in a multiple layers or same layer it's up to me so now i said hey i will install everything in one layer only because i don't want to complicate uh, this this one in a separate this one is separate layer this one is separate layer this one is separate layer because here as for the discussion what i said you should be having a separate layer but right now for the sake of Ease of demo. I'm keeping everything in one layer, and this one will be in one layer. Agree with me, all of you? Yeah. So my manager said, "How much time you will take?" And I said, "Sir, I'll take only five minutes. Only five minutes. Ah, that is too much actually, buddy. So can I do that? So guys, look at my screen here. And right now, all the commands you know that. So Docker ps. There is one container which is Ubuntu created, which is this is done. This is done. I got a container here, and how to create any container? You know that. After that, I'll go inside the container and install the Git. So can I go inside the container? Docker attach and Git both will work in this case because of bash. So the container is here. Now I want to install the Git, which is a Git. So I know the commands apt. So one two. Remember? So see, I'm installing the Git. Oh, Git is not there. What to, what to do? So you know that operating system. You have to update the repository, and I'm updating this one to repository. And here the screen now installing the Git. Remember everything I'm doing in the container, and Git is installed inside a container almost. And what work is done? Git is done. Oh yes. Now what is the next requirement? Apache. Let me install the Apache also. Apache two. I know the package name, so I'm doing it. If you don't know that Google, you can do that. Really. Why? Remember that you have to give it the why. Done. So, which Apache? Let me check this Apache has come or not. Which Apache? Two. Wonderful. And then last one, I need to install Java also. Java is there? No, it's not there. So, you have to install Java. I'm, I'm not copying any file. How to copy and all, you know that. Uh, see, yum install Java that is not there. So I need to do cheating a little bit of it. Just a second. So uh, Java install. Hello everyone. If you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, etc. Kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. 
you would have access to 100s of playlist and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership enjoy thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today